All right, welcome back everybody. This is Josh with Basement Level Magic. We are in round one here with our mono black deck that we kind of forced from the get-go. Uh, we won the die roll, so we'll go ahead and see if this is worth a keep. Uh, yeah, seems decent. We've got a turn one, turn two. You know, flesh bag, flesh bag isn't going to be the greatest, but... I don't know, I guess this is what I'm going for in this deck. Probably could have tried to uh, hold off, but we've got some removal, we've got some plays. Oh, somebody else in black. What are they doing? No wonder we couldn't get all these undead servants. What the heck? <laughs> this is not what you expect to see. All right, well, let's uh, play a second one of those. <laughs> if there are two mono black decks in this pool, this is ridiculous. I'm not going to lie. All right, so let's go ahead and get our attack in, I guess. good thing is we'll be able to do this Flesh Blake Marauder or Way to the Underworld depending on <clears throat> whether we hit our mana. And so if he plays a creature we can... Oh wow. Wow. That's awesome for us. I always hate it that you have to click on that with your Throwing knife, I'm afraid I'm gonna accidentally sack something. Alright, let's get our servant out there. We still have two removal spells, so if he plays just one big creature, we're gonna get in for nine damage next turn. No! Okay. Oh wow. Alright, well, um,. I think let's just go ahead and kill his visionary and hopefully call it a day. All right, mono black attack, you know? Uh, that was a three minute round one. So that seemed good, right? Um. So he's green, black. We saw one single creature. Hopefully he's only playing one. That'd be really good for us. <laughs> uh, I think we'll probably just run this back. I don't... I think we're, we'll probably be faster than whatever he's doing. I could look to bring in the veteran's sidearm. Uh, and maybe cut like a read the bones. Yeah, I think let's cut one read the bones, bring in the sidearm. Alright, this looks fine. So we've got turn two, turn three. Uh oh. Yeah, we can't play that yet. This card would be too good if we could play it on turn one. Well, <laughs> guy can wish, I guess. There's an the undersea troll. So he's already off to a better start than he was last <laughs> last game, but it doesn't take much when you only play one creature in turn yeah, it was turn five or turn six win. Yeah, no point in trying to block there. Jeez, gross. We 
we had a really promising start and then we've you know seven seven swamps is not where we want to be with this 16 land deck hmm I'm surprised he didn't keep up his mana to keep his undersea troll uh, the regenerate ability because I plan on blocking Unless he's just going to use his vial, yeah. And that's that's totally understandable. And we'll go ahead and... I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to block his hitch claw for sure. No need to let that one damage through. Wow, really? Let's do some card draw here. I don't think the archer, archer might be a little too late, but we'll take the we'll take the removal spell. And we'll go ahead and hold up uh, death touch with our imp. Right now, if he, if he keeps mana to, for regeneration, oh, I was going to say, if he keep, kept up regeneration mana, I would block with the death bridge and not with the imp. Hopefully it attacks him, because I will uh, try to kill that undersea troll all day. Jeez, my. All these lands. Alright, so right now, you know, we're not, we're not exactly under much pressure. So I think... I mean, he can regenerate this, but who cares at the point if it's a zero one? Otherwise, I could look to play the Undead Servant. But I'm not really under pressure, and if I can get this Weight of the Underworld on there, I think we're okay. We'll still have the mana up for our Fetid Imp. Trying to decide if, yeah, I, I don't think there's a huge benefit to attacking him with the shaman right now. He's got a bigger board presence. He can kill it with his, just his visionary. Got some decent blocks here. You know, this is, shaman's going to trade with no matter what. Um, I'd rather trade with a card that could, you know, technically deal two damage each turn than the visionary. And then if I do the death touch on our imp, then he loses his big blocker. Yeah, that's a surprising attack that he just made there. And he just gets rid of a forest. Oh my gosh. So I've got 10 of my 16 lands in the first 15 cards. Uh, we'll just get a creature out here. do 
still have this imp to be able to block any of his big guys. You would think that we'll have a lot of live draws considering the fact that we have <laughs> over half of our lands in our hand already. Yeah, he's got a lot of big guys now. My gosh. This land thing is just irritating. And we'll go ahead and we'll definitely trade here. That's actually pretty good for us. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to put the 1-1 one, one counters on. But mm. we'll be able to uh, bring back our Imp, which will stop his Gorger. Yeah, I think that's definitely more worth it than, than uh, bringing back the Shaman. Oh, no. Yeah, that's not what we want to see. Because now he can attach that to his Gorger. Attack in. Kill our Imp. He have re he has regeneration mana up, so it's no point in doing this. I'm actually gonna block, and then if that way, if I draw a undead servant, I am able to get two creatures. Yeah, that's not nothing too exciting, but you know we're we're mana flooded. This is just how it goes sometimes. Go ahead and take the hit so I at least have something, um, you know, because if we don't draw something here, we're dead anyway. <laughs> yeah, just another land. Turn 10, 10 lands, 2 in hand, you know. Oh, jeez. We could have used that in our mono black deck. I don't know how we would have gotten rid of it, but it would have been cool. So we need a removal spell here. <laughs> Gross. Alright. So let's see, uh... Maybe we can do some really fast, real fast build. Um, you know, language doesn't really fit into this. But it's just a, possibly a way out of something. Um, you know, it's one, one slot, but it's able to... I think rather than Way of the Underworld, we'd be better off with like a touch of Moon Glow. Or Moon Glove, whatever it is. Alright, 
Let's do this. All right, we just need to have that real fast, real fast curve out like we did in game one. I'm thinking two thornbow archers, a couple of lands, shaman ghouls. Yep, that looks good. So we've got the one, two, three, four drop. As long as we have, as long as we hit that one, uh, fourth land, we've we'll be able to play everything on curve here. What? How does he have a play? We'll attack in. No reason not to here. Unfortunately, he has an elf, so we don't get the advantage of him taking the one because he doesn't have one elf. Attack in again. I'm not looking to get rid of his trapper just yet. We've got a good curve, so no reason not to go like this. You know, next turn I may be looking to do the fleshbag marauder if he doesn't play a creature this turn. Attack in. See what he does. If he blocks our shaman, yeah. <laughs> bye bye, Hydra. So we'll have the Marauder to take care of his Mana Gorge or Hydra. And he just gets rid of a forest. Um, the question is whether I want to get rid of the Marauder or the Archer. Um, I think I'll just keep the 3-1. The I mean, he is playing uh, some Elves in his deck, so you may, we may just not be getting enough value out of the Archer at this point. So just to have the 3 power versus the 1-2 seems good at this time. Yeah, so he did have an elf, so good thing we didn't hinge on that. Ooh. So I think I think if we do Shadows of the Past right now and attack in, um, it's probably the best option for us. Otherwise, if we attack in, we trade one of our guys for his, end up getting probably two damage. Yeah, I think we want to get our Shadows of the Past going. So we can just try to set up our draws here the next few turns. And then we'll attack in. Um, this way, yeah. I was going to say, if he decides to trade, then we'll be able to have two Scries. We're actually already halfway um, to having the four creatures in our graveyard to make Shadows of the Past do the life drain. Mm. 
And I'm already planning on blocking our his shaman. Well, you know, now he's gonna look to get aggressive. I think right now we're okay to take the five damage if he attacks in. Because he's gonna then have to, he's gonna take some damage next turn. So, we're looking at either Read the Bones or Deathbird Shaman after this. Probably, I don't know, let's, I'm going to go to attacks, attack with all. He blocks. Alright, so we do get two scries here. Yeah, that's not not quite what we're looking to get. We could probably use a land, really. All right, so I think I want to just get the Deathbridge Shaman out there because knowing that we're gonna hit a land, um, if we do read the bones this turn, okay, we draw cards, but then we're pretty much done. Um, plus, it'll allow us to do a little bit more scrying. Alright, and he's going to... So he'll kill our Deathbird Shaman. He's going to get in for five. Or, actually, he'd only get in for three if he uses the throwing knife on our shaman. And then he's gonna have to discard one card, he's only got two in hand. Yeah, so we'll see if, it, I'm, I'm assuming he'll chuck his knife at us. Oh geez, yeah, there goes the titanic growth. Uh, we still want the swamp on top. So he must have a pretty good card in hand. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do the undead servant. And at this point, I'm almost tempted to, to not attack in and just hold up my blockers because we are one land away from activating Shadows of the Past to do our life drain. Yeah, so if we get one land, we're going to be doing um, two damage to him, gain two life. So if we kind of stall out the board, we're, we're in a decent spot. Unfortunately, we don't hit the we don't hit the draw that we were wanting. Uh, I do think we'll go ahead and read the bones, though. Ooh, these are decent cards for us. Uh, I don't know that we really want the construct. I'm gonna put the imp on top, put the construct on the bottom. I can play out another card. Yeah, we're not exactly looking to do Warhorn right now. I'm really just... Yeah, I was really, really looking for a land there. Uh, but Fetid Imp is just too good against a, you know, big green dummy deck. Right now, we're, we're definitely glad that we have this imp. I 
I think I'm going to go ahead and attack in with our Undead Servant. And then if he had kills it... Either way, we're okay. We'll play the Imp. Because if at some point we end up playing the other Undead Servant, we are able to... able to make uh, some zombie tokens. So we're not looking to do the sidearm, but we are looking for a land. So good. So we'll be able to hit our land drop next turn. Um, but right now, I... he's got, yeah, I think let's get our flyer out there just because we don't want him to start hitting us with this revenant. So, yeah, I think we go ahead and play our Undead Servant here, keeping up mana for our Fetid Imp. And we'll be able to put out a few blockers. I mean, otherwise, right now with him having bigger creatures than us, I don't think it's a huge benefit to um, look to do the Life Drain yet. We're definitely not ready to attack yet, either. So I've got five, five creatures in the, in the bin. I'm just wondering if no Necromantic Summons would bring back anything worthwhile. We do have to remember that his Foundry of the Councils can make two uh, Thopter tokens that are flying, so we're going to have to watch out for those. But the good thing is our Shadow of the Past activation is going to be able to negate that kind of attacking. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty unfortunate. But we can bring our, uh, we can use our Necromantic Summons to bring back our Fetid Imp next turn. And the Swamp is actually pretty useful because next turn, if we do our Necromantic Summons, we do, we have six lands so we can activate it as well. So we'll keep the, we'll keep the Swamp on top. Other ways we could even look to bring back like the Fleshbag Marauder. So he has to get, yeah. No, I think we're, we'll definitely want the Fetid Imp now, though. Yeah, we just need to have the, that's basically like a removal spell. We've got enough on the ground that we can take out his gorger, or not take out his gorger, but we can, yeah, we can take out his gorger if he attacks in with it at some point. Um, right now, if we attack, we've got eight, and he's got gorger coming back. We definitely don't want to look to do that.
Coming down to the wire here. I still haven't been able to do any of these activations to gain the life yet. But, you know, next turn I do have the mana to be able to hold up our death touch on our imp and to do an activation. Nice. Very nice. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and, you know, turtle up, start doing the activations, hold up mana for our uh, fetid imp. Hopefully he uh, doesn't realize that we'll be able to do that. I don't know how you don't, but, you know, sometimes it happens. So he's coming in. We'll go ahead and block the big guy. Set up to take the hit from his stopters. Hopefully he doesn't have a titanic strength or titanic growth. Or even might of the masses. If he does, we're pretty much just dead. He did have it. All right, so we got real close there. <laughs> oh well, you know that's one of the issues you run into with with running a monocolor deck. You you definitely sacrifice having a lot of the uh, bigger drops and the benefits that you get from playing other colors. But we'll go ahead and we'll keep trying this. Uh, round two's coming up.